Hey there, everybody. Welcome to this Thursday edition of ESPN FC's Extra Time. Shaka Hislop, just barely able to contain it. Yeah, I, I, I wait for that every every extra time. I know, I know. It's not like I do it every time either, yeah. so it definitely doesn't catch you by surprise. We got uh, Robbo and <laughs> Frank do my little bubbly and Jules head. with us uh, as well. I actually don't think I put Jules on the tweet about extra time, so I'm sure I'll be hearing about that from the bosses. Uh, well, you'll be hearing and, about that from, and from Jules. Jules, too, yeah. of course. Uh, yeah, probably his buddies, yeah. Nay, and all those guys. Greasy. Um, Frank, thoughts on the altercation? It's your loss. It's your it is, loss. It is my loss. It is my loss. Frank, your thoughts on the altercation between PK and Griezmann? Of course, uh, a lot made of this in the aftermath of Barcelona's 4-1 loss against PSG. Uh, nothing much to say. You know, it can happen. Uh, you, you, you are smashed by the opponent. You're getting uh, upset, and uh, it can happen. It can happen as long as they talk about it. Maybe in the dressing room after, it's, it's their own business. I'm not worried about the fact that uh, uh, they insulted each other and uh, they were going to be enemies for the rest of their lives. I don't believe that. Mm. It happened to me where I was very upset to uh, one of my teammates and uh, uh, five minutes after the game, we are the best friend in the world. So it doesn't mean anything for me. Jules, you know uh, Greasy. You think you'll be upset? No, I don't think so. I think those things happen a lot. It's just that we can hear everything now because there's no fans. But trust me, even when there's fans, that happens all the time and, and we don't notice it because we can't hear it. So I don't think it's a problem. They were, they were struggling. I think Piqué, as, as we said on the show, is, is the leader of that team, no doubt. And I think he, he's always talking and he wanted to show to Griezmann that not helping defensively, not keeping the ball a bit better was, was a problem. And I think oft, as often, if you at every level in football when you that kind of when you've got that kind of frustration that's how you shout that's how sometimes you speak to to another teammate and like Frank said after the game is forgotten mm. sometimes in our pre-show prep things will get intense prep you see <laughs> 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 I was gonna make a joke but it wasn't better than the one you just made so we'll leave it there uh, what's the point of VAR when you don't look at that tackle on Ronaldo asks Alex stonewall penalty no. Um, Frank, did you think it was a penalty against Ronaldo late in that uh, game against Porto? No, for me it wasn't because the thing is, um, um, even if the opponent comes to uh, uh, onto Ronaldo, Ronaldo already falls uh, when he, he, he makes the, the, the dribble and feels that he doesn't get the, he can get the ball back. So he starts healing uh, before the player touches him. So therefore, for me, it's intentional. Uh, from Ronaldo, so it's not a penalty. Uh, Robbo, opinion divided on this one, at least when I looked online and all the Ronaldo, yes. Ronaldo fanboys were going wild. Uh, what do you think? Uh, well, I'm not a uh, Ronaldo fanboy, as you, I think you've just called him, but I would have given the penalty because I don't think the defender is actually making, he's actually facing the wrong way and he impedes Ronaldo. If Ronaldo, again, Ronaldo was going down, but there was still a foul there and I would have given a penalty on that occasion. Jules? I'm with Robo. I thought it was a pen. I thought watching it uh, as live on the television straight away, I thought it was a pen. And then with the replays, I still think that it was it was a pain. There was it was nowhere near the ball, the defender, and clearly there was contact as well. And Ronaldo was going for the ball. I mean, I don't know. I thought this one could easily have been given. All right, very well. I've just been told I got a, a great quote from Andrea Pirlo in my email, so I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But. Uh... He said it was a clear penalty. I know he said that. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, he it's said it was a clear penalty, penalty but yeah. I think the referee said the game was over and right. Pierlo's retort was... That was the was, explanation right. Pierlo. You right. can go back and check, which, so, which is true, correct. Right? It, it, it does, and we've seen that happen. Yeah. Um, Manchester United benefited yeah. from That's right. a penalty that the ref overturned after the final whistle went. Uh, so, um, I, I, I thought it was a penalty as well. Uh, I, I, will say, I will say this in the, in the referee's defence, though. He allowed a lot of physicality in this game, more so than I've seen at any Champions League game for quite some time. And we've always made this point that league games are often refereed very differently from Champions League games. So while I thought this was a penalty, um, I thought the referee allowed a lot to go all game long anyway. Uh, next question about another penalty late in the match. Sevilla Dortmund, Luke de Jong got, got kind of pulled down in the box. Do you think that was a pen? I didn't. Didn't. I, I, I didn't think I didn't think he was getting to the ball. I didn't think. Look, I, on first look, or maybe second look, when I saw one replay, I, I didn't think. I, I, from what I saw, I don't think Luke, Luke De Jong is getting to the ball. And, and if that's the case, if he's not getting there, unless it's 
dangerous play. I, I, I don't give it. Frank, did Sevilla deserve a penalty late? Yeah, it's uh, for me a clear penalty in the way that the defender doesn't even look at the ball. And he only, only tries to, to grab the young and to make sure that he doesn't go to the ball. So for me, it's a clear penalty. Bravo. Absolutely, and I'd just, ask, I'd just like to sort of ask Shaka. So it's not a foul if somebody grabs hold of somebody and that, that person wasn't quite going to get to the ball. You can foul off the ball, it doesn't really matter. Because that's a clear penalty. <laughs> I, I, I don't think so. I, I think two players are tussling. <laughs> One clearly isn't getting to the ball. Neither of them get to the ball. Right. Let it play. The two players tussling is a bit of a, a little bit generous. Of a tussle. It's, it's a generous way to describe that. Uh, who haven't we heard from yet? My Jules, penalty or no? Yeah, I thought it was a penalty. And I, and I think Thomas Meunier should maybe try basketball. He might be better at basketball than he's at football, certainly <laughs> defensively. So that looked like, look like a proper... Let, let's go and block you. I'm good at basketball. Uh, Jules, what about the penalty uh, called against PSG? You think that was a penalty? Uh, I mean, uh, no, as a PSG fan, I didn't think so. I was outraged at the television. Uh, yeah, of, there's, of course, Kruzava clips the, the heel of, of the young, and then the young with his heel clips his own leg, his second leg. I think Kruzava is looking at the ball the whole time to head it. I'm not even sure the ball gets to the young anyway, because between Kimpembe and Kruzava, I think one of them Wait, that has the matter. ball out. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. But that's why it was given, and we've seen them given so many times that, yeah, I think he's right to give it. But if you give this one, give the one when Griezmann walks on Mbappe's foot, that's in the box. It's a very similar contact, and, and, and I don't know why you give one and not the other in that case. Hmm. Robbo, uh, where'd you come down on the, on the PSG penalty? Uh, it's a 50-50 call. The referee decided it was a penalty ah. and he wasn't going to change his mind when he looked at VAR. So I'm going to sit on the fence in that one. I mean, uh, really? <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Uh, Frank, you make a call. Uh, I, I wouldn't have given a penalty because I see Kozawa on the replay, you know, uh, not trying to do anything against De Jong. He plays the ball Intent and he doesn't, doesn't make any foul. Intent doesn't matter. It's a... Con Okay, but I agree with Jules. Why don't you give a penalty against Griezmann as well? Because he's tempted on Mbappe. It's even worse a foul than, than, than Kurzawa on, uh, on De Jong who only think about getting the ball away. And, and don't forget that De Kurzawa gets the ball and put it in the corner. So he doesn't care about De Jong, he plays. You can, okay, I can accept that the, the referee can give a penalty and it doesn't matter because P P Paris won 4-1. But you have to give a penalty against Griezmann as well. Mm. Bravo, why is Rashford so inconsistent in front of goal with his decision-making and other stuff? He did score today, mm -hmm. uh, but missed probably most he people did score. would describe as two yeah, He did score, sitters. but he made, some, yeah, he made a couple of real howlers when he was going through one-on-one. -on -one. I don't think he quite composes himself when he's running through on goal. He, you know, he likes to run round it, as uh, Thierry Henry used to do, and bend it into that far corner with his right foot. But he doesn't always get it right, and sometimes he hits it too close to the goalkeeper. I just think he lacks that little bit of focus when he's running onto the ball and a little bit of composure. And it's nothing to do with technique, because he's got great technique. He's just got to make better decisions right at the last moment. Just compose himself, be cold Sibby. and clinical, and I'm sure he'll score more goals. Sebi, what I want to say about Rashford is he's a fantastic player. I, don't want to, I didn't want to play against those kind of players because they go so fast. Technically, unbelievable. The only thing with Rash, Rashford is he's not a killer. Mm. You know, I remember Mourinho talking to, to Benzema about that, that uh, you want to do nice things, you know, and you don't, it's like you're a little bit easygoing, sloppy in a way, which, which I'm sure is not, but he has to become a killer because he has everything to become one of the best strikers in the world. If he, and he's, he's very close to that. But he can score, I'm sure, the double of goals that he, uh, he, he had scored so far. Frank, who does he remind you of as a player? Uh, Nicolas Anelka. Hmm. Clearly, Nicolas Anelka. I mean, I played against Nicolas when he played for Arsenal and when he played for Paris Saint-Germain. The pace, um, the, cl the cleverness uh, of the positioning, everything. Uh, and Nicolas had kind of the same problem, a consistency of scoring goals, of being a killer. You know, uh, that's a question you have to have. Do you prefer Shearer, who is not very elegant, who wasn't very elegant, uh, wasn't very technical, but was a killer, a kind of a crazy finisher? 
or do you prefer to have a Rashford or an Elka who can show you something fantastic but doesn't score or did, uh, don't score uh, most every time they have, a, they have a chance to? I don't know, it's a, it's a debate. But uh, I love Rashford like I loved an Elka. You played against an Elka, good comparison? Um. I don't know if I played against Anelka. I can't remember playing against Anelka. What years were, were Anelka at Arsenal? At Arsenal? 98, 99. That, that was no, 90, yes, 98, 97. 97, 90, 98. Really didn't make much of an impression. <laughs> um, well then, yes, I guess I did play against Nicholas Anelka. 97 through 99. <laughs> I, had, I had no problems with Anelka at all. Yeah, no, yeah. easy. easy. <laughs> Sounds like it. Sounds like it. Uh, read the story about Wenger stating that uh, Arsenal almost signed Mbappe for free when he was at Monaco. Do you guys have any stories where your clubs missed out on signing a great player during that player's formative years? You're laughing, Shaka. No, uh, uh, well, it's not, not not to the question, not um, not during his former not, not during the formative years, but uh, uh, Papa Diop, who, who died mm -hmm, recently. Yeah. Um, I was at I was at Pompey. He was he was about to sign for Portsmouth, so he came down. He came out to Portsmouth. We were staying in the hotel. Uh, we were we went. Harry always used to take us to Exeter, which is way down in, in the west coast of England for, for preseason. So we were there for preseason, and all of a sudden, Peter Story, the managing director, shows up at the hotel at, at the training camp, and Harry's like, "We doing here?" He's like, well, come to join, you know, just come to see everybody. So he's like, Where, where's Papa Diop? He's like, well, I left him at the hotel. And Harry's like, are you crazy? We haven't signed him yet. You cannot leave him there. And send Peter Story back. And, 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 and this is a three, four hour drive. By the time Peter Story gets back to the hotel in Portsmouth, Papa Diop is in Fulham, signed for Fulham. Wow. Credit to Fulham. Like, yeah. Good work. Yeah. I'm not even so mad. So we're talking I'm about impressed. missing out on a player. Um, Frank, any any from your memory bank? Um, um, well, um, I remember, um, you know, talking about Mbappe. Mbappe oh, and his father agreed about that, almost signed for Caen. He had Real Madrid, he had so many other clubs. I guess he had all the clubs in the world. But I think he found Caen quite a good uh, club for, for, for Kylian to, to start. And well, I don't know what happened, you know, uh, and, and he went to, I guess, uh, Monaco. Uh, maybe Jules knows better that, about that. But for me, the big story of, of well, you know, I, did, I had a try in Metz, um, uh, we were in League One, uh, and uh, um, I was told because I wasn't uh, picked by Metz at the end of the try, uh, like I wasn't picked by Marseille at the end of the try when I was young, that they uh, absolutely rejected Michel Platini hmm. in Metz, and he signed for Nancy. So. <laughs> Wow. You, they only miss maybe one of the best players in the world. And uh, he, 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 I was really stunned when I was told the story. Because how, could, who, how can you miss Michel Platini? <laughs> That's crazy. Hey, uh, Frank, what do you think about France's chances at the Euros this year with Mbappe performing well recently? Again, I explained, you know, before that I'm fed up, you know, talking about one player uh, in a collective sport, but I guess it's a plus. For sure, it's a plus to have Mbappe in the in the form that he, he is right now. And uh, and of course, I guess France is the favorite of uh, the European Championship after winning the World Cup. But what what's going to happen alongside him? You know, uh, Pogba, Griezmann, Kante. Uh, what kind of form they're gonna they're gonna be at? You know, Giroud's gonna play at front, or it's gonna be somebody else. You know, so many question marks. The only one who can be persuaded now that uh, he's going to win the European Championship is maybe Didier Deschamps. Maybe. But um, I don't have the answer now. Why do newly promoted teams start to sign players to kick off their new season while neglecting Shaka, some of the players who played a key part in their promotion? Do you think it's unfair to them? I'm not sure unfair is, is the right word. It's, it's kind of part of, part of the business. Um, to well, that, if you get a team promoted, you're no, kind of no, bitter, yeah, you know. no. To, to, to that point, though, what, what I'm saying is, if, if you're in a team and, and they sign somebody else in your position, you accept that. You don't see it as being unfair. That's just kind of the nature of the business. That, that being said, you understand clubs wanting to, to sign players because you feel you need new players, you need a bigger squad, maybe you need a, a little bit more, um, a little bit more quality. If you don't feel your squad has the quality. 
But I, I think there's real value in showing faith with what you have mm. and, and who got you up. Uh, if you want to add to that sparingly, fair enough. But I am, I am not a firm believer in this. Where we get promoted, we need to sign nine or ten new players and, and figure it out from there. Add three or four, five if you want to push your boat out. But you've got to keep the nucleus of, of your old squad together. Otherwise, you disenfranchise the majority of that dressing room. From a manager's perspective, Robbo, kind of a fine line, isn't it? You can either reward the guys who got you up with some faith or, you know, you got to get better. Well, you don't reward players. They're either good enough to play or they're not good enough to play. But what a lot of managers and coaches and clubs do wrong is that they then go and buy what they call Premier League experience. But most of those players they get that have got Premier League experience aren't better than the players they've already got. And they're on their way down. That's the big mistake that most clubs make and most managers make, thinking that these players are going to be better than the ones they've already got. And they, and they sort of, uh, the other players are, are not too happy about it. And it doesn't build team, great team spirit. And Frank's just talked, talked about you have to have great team spirit and you have to do well as a team. That's the problem they make. All right, last question. Do you still feel the effects of injuries that you suffered during your career? Uh, we'll save you for last. Uh, <laughs> Frank, that kind of how are you feeling? Kind of dismissive. Uh, I had the chance to not uh, have any surgery my, all my career long, except my nose, because uh, thank you, Mr. Shearer, he broke it twice, uh, but he's been broken four times. But, uh, and I couldn't breathe uh, on one side. So, but otherwise, I was pretty fortunate. Well, I guess my ankle and one of my uh, quad that I completely wrapped uh, but uh, after my career, but uh, because of many injuries during my career. But um, yeah, I had 16 times that I torn my, uh, my right ankle and uh, 15 times on the left side. So <laughs> wow. in winter, yeah, it's quite, it's quite, uh, it's quite weak. Frank's in great shape, though. Uh, Robbo's in great shape, too. So if, if you're in pain, Robbo, it certainly doesn't show. Uh, well, I'm, I have to manage an injury that um, uh, after an operation that I should never have had. I think there's only two people in the world that have ha ever had the operation. It was called a pubic symphysis fusion, and they realised that the operation is a failure. It shouldn't be. It should never have taken place. Mm. And I have the pro still the, have the problems wow. from it because my back does all the work rather than my pubic symphysis. So my back always goes out, but I have to manage it. So it's always there with me. Ah, I hate to hear that. Jules, you played in uh, in what the fourth tier of French football? Were they rough? Yeah, but not for, not, not for long, so I'm cool with injuries. <laughs> Jules feels great. I was, I was thinking about making up something. I was thinking about the joke, yeah, my, my right ankle, I mean, 12 times. <laughs> you know, I had surgery in Italy with Marco Van Basten, same time more or less, and, but now it's okay. Uh, but I could not come up with anything good, so no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, Shaka? Yeah? You're creaking all over the... Oh, yeah, all over the place. All over the, the newsroom, all, all, all over the studios. We can hear you coming from Let me see, my, my, my back's no good. I, I think that's kind of just... You're part, tall, that's part, tough on exactly. the back too, That's part right? of the course with, with, with ex-players, as, as Rob was, was explaining there. My hamstrings I've got issues with. Again, that's kind of part of the course. <laughs> I, have a, I have a plate in my left ankle from when I, I broke it in, mm. in 2000. That, that's not fun, no. And, and most recently, I, I can't throw. Any, any throw in action and my shoulder goes. Your shoulder's just my shot. Shoulder, my shoulder's just shot. But that's, cuff or that's, that's more recent. That that's is new. That has only developed over the last 12 or 18 months. What are you throwing? Uh, I throw rocks and things. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. All right, let's not admit to anything else then. <laughs> let's just wrap this extra time up mm -hmm. before we find out where those rocks landed. Well. Uh, that's it for us. Thanks to uh, Jules, Frank, Robbo. Thanks to all you for sending the questions. Thanks to Shaka. As well, we will be back with another edition of ESPN FC on Friday. Join us then. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.